schools. And over 14 years, we've helped over 300 families, over 3,000 children, and it's just been an unbelievable program. This past year, with the help of WTKA and Michigan Insider, mvictors.com, and the athletic department, who has always been part of this program since day one, including coaches, administrators, and athletes, we reached an all-time high of helping 115 families and well over 300 children this year alone. It's grown tremendously. <laughs> and now we're branching out into other communities, into Saline, the Washtenaw County Sheriff's Department is involved, the Saline Police Department, Chelsea Police Department, it's just getting bigger and better. But the goal, two things, to help children at Christmas, and then the other big part of this program, why the police departments were involved, was to try and change the image of the police in the eyes of the children. And what better way to do this than to have the children associate Santa Claus and the police together. And the police deliver all the toys to the children in uniform. So it's kind of a neat feeling, and I've been very fortunate to go on those deliveries. And believe me, it is priceless to see the look on these children's faces, to see parents crying. And these are children that would have nothing if we didn't help them. So it's very, very rewarding. So once again, I'm so honored to be part of this, to have the opportunity to talk to you about it. We have a little bit of a new name this year. It's the Magic of Christmas Adopt a Family Program. And it's just, uh, I've had a lot of wonderful things happen to me in my sports career, but I've always said this is the best thing that's ever happened. Thank you. Go Blue! Yeah. Thank you so much, Debbie. So we're going to get this started. You may recognize some of the names, the faces, and for sure, you will recognize the voices. Go ahead, Walt. Notre Dame game 
when he was counting down. And then the tribute. Bob Euford was awful close to me. And it meant a lot that I had the friendship that I did. He had a certain few guys that he'd throw nicknames out. Anthony the Darter Carter, Dave the Destroyer Brown, Gil the Jersey Jet Chapman, and I, Dennis the Menace Franklin. And the one that was special to me, which made me proud to lead my team, the guts and glue an amazing blue. So that video is the longest one, and I want to tell everybody in here, and maybe you didn't understand what we're looking for if you want. Man, we handed out those uh, towels and stuff, but maybe it's because of, in our generation, we were too old, nobody remembers. But when we bring and start the next video, these are gonna be players that you love and know a lot better than us. And when those great touchdowns and great games go, if you want to stand up and hoot and holler and swing those towels, be my guest. <laughs> so next, why that was so special. In the last 65 years at Michigan, we've had two announcers. Two guys play by play. And maybe my math is a little off, but I believe for 35 years Bob Buford was there. And for the next 30, we have one guy I'm going to bring up in just a minute, Mr. Frank Beckman. And his sidekick. How'd you like that picture with Bo? A lot of hair. He said, that's when he had hair. And Jim is a former player and went into the broadcast and been part of Michigan ever since he played here. So we're tremendously fortunate to have the people we do. And that's why I wanted all of you to be able to share what we have over all the years. One thing I failed to mention that we're doing today is the few speakers that come up. We have the football with the block camera, and we're going to pass it to the next guy and to the next guy until we finish the program. Because that's what this university is all about is passing it down. So before I introduce the next two, and as you can see, Frank and Jim are two of the most professional guys that I know. But in one particular instance, maybe they weren't so professional. Oh. Go ahead and roll the tape. <laughs> ever broadcast on WJR's statewide network occurred at the Northwestern game back in 1983 when two Michigan players, one named Rogers, the other named Hammerstein, collided on a play. And our beloved, but very human, Frank Beckman, lost it on the air. He's looking to the rush from behind and he's going to be sacked by Rogers and by Hammerstein. And what else would you expect? That melodious tune struck out by the two Michigan linemen, Rogers and Hammerstein, on the sack. <laughs> you were waiting for that all year long, weren't you? You were waiting for that all year long. I don't believe it. Frank Beckman can't stop laughing at his own Rogers and Hammerstein joke. <laughs> Too bad we're not playing Oklahoma. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha. 
record stopping plays. And back to throw goes Grisbach. Looking down the middle, he finds two minutes. So without further ado, I'll bring the first of the dynamic duo up here, Mr. Jim Brandstead. in the legacy 